What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today you guys knew it was probably coming. We have to do something about the headlights in this thing. Um, look, the, <laughs> the old school halogen bulbs while like on the old stuff down there in the shop, I like it. Uh, I just think it just it, it fits the era. On this car though, it's kind of like that in between, but here's the deal. Um, I don't tint the windows on any of my old cars. So like the 52 is not tinted, the 72, the 55, nor do I plan to. But on this, the windows are completely blacked out. And guys, if you didn't notice in the last video of with this car in it, when we went to the track, I now have the front windshield completely tinted in 35%. And then on the way home today, check that out. A rock flies up off a UPS truck and boom, hits right there. So that uh, that's very frustrating, but it happens. You know, um, I'm hoping maybe I can get that at least filled so it doesn't completely crack out. But if not, uh, we may have to end up replacing the windshield, which I hope not because I literally just got it tinted like three days before um, we went to the track. So. Anyway, the downside to the old school stuff like this is while it does have a bulb that you can change, it does not have a separate high and a low beam. So several guys choose to go with an aftermarket like headlight assembly, the whole assembly itself. I don't really want to do that. I like these. I don't know if they've been replaced or this has just been really well cared for, but I don't, I don't really care to do that. So we're going to try something new today. It's a bulb that's all in one unit and I'll list it in the description um like always guys and i don't know if you can hear the buzzer going off i've obviously got the headlights on with the car off uh even though with it running you probably wouldn't be able to hear it anyway but we're gonna see what kind of difference we can make and uh what i will do is it's not really dark enough now i wanted to be able to talk during the daylight before we started this project but we'll take it down the road at night uh i'll put i'll get inside here in a second and show you how dark it is um like in this lighting but when it gets dark, like pitch black dark, we'll drive down the road and then we'll also do that same thing after we replace them and see what kind of difference it makes. I don't know how great the camera is going to pick up like the night, you know, when I look back at the ones I've done before, it, it so, so if you're looking at it on a computer screen, maybe not on a phone so much, but either way, uh, we're going to replace these today and, um, let's look inside right now. I'm going to turn this off so you guys don't have to listen to it, but Here's what we've got. It is pretty dark in here. Um, look, the this thing, it was it was definitely a big difference when we tinted the windows at 5%. This is 5% on all the, basically from here back. And um, I could tell you there's a huge difference in making the air conditioner work. As far as like going down the road in the sun, uh, it made a huge difference in the temperature in this car. But I always do 35% on the entire windshield, or at least on most of my stuff. And so that's what we've done now. We've got 35% from the top to the bottom of this glass. And I know somebody's inevitably gonna say in the comments, well, why would you do that? Well, it makes a big difference. I drive to work in the sun and I drive home from work into the sun. So it makes a big difference. Now look, if the sun's right in front of you, you're still probably gonna have to wear sunglasses or fold your visor down, but uh, on those days where it's, you know, kind of up here, it makes a huge, huge difference. Not to mention, guys, these dashes are not the best made things in the world. And so it does a good job of protecting this. So I, I like it for that reason as well. I don't have to put one of those visors or anything up in here. So either way, uh, let's come back out when it gets dark and we will take you down the road and show you the difference um, or the show you the before. And then we'll install them and show you the after. We're back out here in the pitch black um i can't even find my door handle it's so dark so let's you can see here what we got to work with what we got to start with anyway so this is what we got we'll come out here and do this exact same thing when um when we get the bulbs replaced so let's run down the road um i'll probably run down the road into some light here but we'll, at least that'll give us an idea what we're working with Let me let this bike go by. So we're not um, following light anyway. I'm gonna try to put you up here close to the steering wheel so maybe you get, and I tell you what, let's turn the interior lights down. That way we get a good idea of what do we, what we start with. 
Of course, there's another car coming. We could still probably, yeah, we'll wait. Nobody drives in front of my house until I'm wanting to film something. It's the way it is when I'm filming in the daylight too though. And this isn't, for some reason this one isn't as bad as like the Yukon was even with the halogens now look it's it's dark you know you can't see anything out of the sides really uh, unless there's you know some kind of light but when i go when i go back here i'll use the brights and then i'll take the same exact path around the same time when we get the bulbs changed I don't know how good the bulbs are gonna be as far as like changing from bright to dim. We're just gonna have to test and see. So there we got our dims. That's bright. I feel like they need a little bit of aiming too, but so dims. Definitely a different, I mean, it's definitely brighter with the brights on. I think it just shines out more, but all right, let's get this thing in there and uh, change these bulbs out. Hopefully it's not, we don't have to remove a bunch of stuff to get them in. Now that we're down here in the shop, let's see if we can get these things replaced. This is what the kit comes with, guys. I don't know how it manages. Maybe it turns both of them on um, when you hit high beam. I don't really know. We're gonna find out. So anyway, um, this is a turn signal, I believe, on these cars. It looks like, I was hoping this would be relatively easy and I wouldn't have to take the battery out or anything, and maybe that's the case. Looks like they turn. I may be wrong. Oh, they do. I just don't know if I can get my hand in there to turn them is the problem. The gum fell out. So, what do we do? Well, it looks like these just set in a channel. You do? Huh. I don't know. I'm gonna have to get a flashlight down here and see exactly what's going on. It looks like there may be a, like a, a ring on here to keep these things in place. And I'll try to bring you in a little closer here in a minute. Let me go grab a light and we'll bring you down closer and look at them. There is like a plastic locking ring there. You can see, Let's see if I can get my light to kind of stay here while we pull that back. And I think guys, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get my hand in there and turn that thing or not. Uh, I just, my hand's too big to get in there. I feel like I've got it somewhat loose, but we need to turn it a little bit in order to get it out of the channel. I wonder if this side's any easier. Looks about the same. You can pop this piece of plastic loose. I don't know, I just feel like it'd be easier on us if we could get the whole light assembly out. But I really don't want to take it out, even though I do think, guys, it needs to be aimed a little bit. Um, to me, it looks like it's a like one light shining a little higher than the other, but we're gonna see if we can negotiate that out. I'm gonna have to do it um, with two hands, I feel like. This thing makes it a little bit of a pain. That one's loose. All right, we're gonna give it a shot by trying to twist those out and uh, may end up having to take the battery out and part of the air box. I don't, well, no, on this side, I can reach back behind. So that makes life a little easier. Let's see if we can twist this one out. There we go. That one came out. And they didn't, I didn't even twist it. Let's see if we can pull it up through here. 
Yeah, I think I can with two hands. May mangle the bulb doing it, but definitely can get it out of there with two hands. All right. So that's it. It really doesn't twist in, guys. I really think that um, it's all held together um, with that plastic clip. So what I may do is we may, let's see if this fits over this. We may put it in like this. Ooh wee. I don't know if that ring is gonna go, it's definitely not gonna go over that fan. I'm wondering if we can get it in between this. Okay, that's how it goes. So put this over the bulb and then we'll try to sneak the bulb in and plug it in. That's gonna be interesting to say the least. I feel like I'm definitely gonna have to pull the battery out on the other side. I've already dropped that piece. The cool thing is we can at least plug it in afterwards. We don't have to plug it in and then try to get it in place. I think we got that one in. Holy cow, not fun. Wanted to show you guys on this, how this works. So I got this, if you take this collar off that you see, that's why it's removable. So you can get your plastic piece on and it not interfere with the fan. Cause you can't get it on the back end because the hole's not big enough on the inside to do that. So now that we've got it together, we can push it back in there. Cause this is what locks it in place. If you don't have that, you obviously can't push it in. So make sure that it's seated all the way. Now we'll get the light back in. Another thing you wanna do is, I don't know if you guys can see, but our bulb, I know this LED makes a weird light my flashlight but uh, you want to make sure it's up and down or at least that's where we're going to test it at you still have the ability to turn this and honestly guys if the wire is coming out of the bottom you should have it good so i went ahead and plugged it in i'm going to turn it on just to test this one side even though we don't have the other side yet let's do that real quick listen to the dinging of the oh my all right you can hear the fan Look, look at the difference. Holy cow. I think this is going to be a huge upgrade. I mean, wow. All right, let's see what happens when we put it on bright. I don't, I don't know. Okay, it just straight turns off, I guess. Okay, so maybe you just don't have brights on those. That's interesting. Okay, so no brights. I guess that's the way they're designed is, um, that's weird. You know, these have two bulbs, obviously, in the same deal. I just thought maybe, maybe one would come on and the other one wouldn't. We'll plug them both in and see if it's a polarity issue. I don't think you can plug them in backwards. I don't, at least it, no, you can't. Only one way to plug them in. Maybe it's because it's getting an oddball load. So either way, let's see if we can get this one out and then we'll give it a shot. I fought with this side for, the min for a minute and then I ultimately decided, you know what, let's just unhook the battery and make it easier on ourselves. 13 millimeter, if you've still got your hold down in place. And guys, I'll list these lights and uh, stuff down below in the description if you're curious or want to pick up a set of these. I think it's gonna make a big difference. Let's unhook the negative first, actually. Here's that. Still got the Delco battery. I, I think this guy that, you know, I told you this is an original owner car, if you guys caught that video where I picked this thing up, but I think this guy went to the dealer for everything. Nobody uses a GM battery, that's for sure. Now we have a little better access here. We can pull this light out. Holy cow. It, if you had really small hands, I still think it'd be a problem because of the, there's a couple 
like pieces of wiring harness here that gets in the way. I'm having to kind of, I'm even struggling with, holy cow. Yeah, I'm struggling with the battery out even. There's a big wiring harness here. I think I'm just gonna unclip it. And uh, then maybe I'll have better access. This right here, I think if we unclip that, that'll give us the additional room that we need. There we go. Now, let's put you back up on the tripod and let's see if we can swap these out. Same situation here, pull this off, put this on, put this back. And you need to kind of get it centered so you can push this all the way down. Now let's try to go back in place. Ooh, that's a tight fit. Holy cow, guys. Nice. I think got it straight up and down. Looks like it. I just don't love the way it fit in the opening here. It only kind of wants to go in one way. No way you're doing this with the battery out, guys. No way. All right, let's put the battery back in, hook that wire back up, and see if it works. That one fought me a little in the other. Um, here's what I found out. If you, you know that sleeve that you take off the light? If you take that off, get that mounted in the light, then put your plastic ring in to lock it down, you can just push the bulb right in. That would have been the easier way to do it. So let's give it a shot. See, we got two. What happens on bright? Uh oh. So it does have a bright. This one isn't working. That's interesting. Maybe. It's not plugged in all the way. Cow. That's weird, guys. I may unplug this one and make sure that we're all wired up good, but I mean, that's bright. I don't know if it changes. It does. So maybe I just got a bad one out of the box or something. We'll mess with it a little bit and uh, see if we can get it to come on. I had bent over a prong on the new light. This is on bright. That's on dim. Both working now. Definitely gonna make a huge upgrade on this car, that's for sure. And I may do some aiming. Um, I'm gonna turn these off and I'll show you guys the two aiming points. I think it has multiples. Uh, let me show you exactly where we're going to be adjusting because when I probably go to do it, um, it'll be a little too dark to show you. Let's look at the adjustment areas here. So obviously guys right here, uh, GM, they love to use Torx on these. So that top one with the green surround, that's one. And then you actually have this guy, which you can tighten up or loosen as well on the side. You see it right there. Uh, you only have access from this side and you've got that obviously on both. Um, 
Not exactly sure how that works, but it looks like you do have some adjustment there. So those are the two areas that we're going to adjust. Other thing, make sure your light is straight up and down like this and um, you should be set. So at this point, we're all finished up. Um, we're gonna go out and take a look at them about the same time when the sun's just starting to go down. It's about the same time we did this um, before. So let's open this up, turn them on and take a look at what we've got. <laughs> I can tell you guys, it's gonna be a huge difference. That's for sure. Look at those things. All right, I'm gonna flip this thing around. I'm gonna point it at my garage door. I'm not gonna go through the, normally guys, you would wanna be 25 feet away. You would measure from the middle of your headlight. There should be a mark in the center of your headlight to the ground. You would subtract four inches and 25 feet away up against a flat wall. That is where you would want it to land. I'm just gonna eyeball this one. I'm not gonna go through that process. So um, I'm gonna turn, flip this thing around and we'll see kind of how they're aimed. Now I'm not even close to 25 feet away because I noticed that, you know, the further I get away, you can't really tell whether one needs to go one way or the other. So that one that I said was misaligned was the driver's side and they're pretty square up and down. It just looks like the driver's side needs to come out towards me. Um, and I think that adjustment would be the inside one. Let's turn it one way or the other and see what happens. It's maxed out actually that way. That is the weirdest. Thing. I don't know if that's, that doesn't seem like the alignment. Maybe we only have a right or left. It doesn't seem like you can adjust this. Let's try this top one. That'll obviously go up and down. Yeah, you can see it going up. My arm wasn't in the way you could. So that's, that's fine. We don't need to adjust that. We need to adjust the right and the left. So we may have to um, get a flashlight and see exactly what's involved. I was almost positive that that was the adjustment for it. Oh, it is. Hmm. It just may be stuck. So I found another set screw right behind that adjustment. So what you have to do is you take that completely out and you can move this manually by hand. The downside is when I move it to kind of where I want it, I moved it out a little bit, but when I do that, it, it looks odd right here lined up with the side marker light. So I'm gonna leave it uh, the way it is. As far as up and down guys, that's that top adjustment there. You can mess with that if you'd like. I feel like mine is fine. I just wanted to get a little closer to, you know, maybe the, towards the center lane, I guess you would say, towards the driver's side. But with the alignment, I, I, don't, I don't think I wanna mess with it. So I'm gonna put that screw back in, tighten that one back up, and uh, then we'll wait for it to get really dark and we'll go for a drive. Let's see what happens here, guys. Ho oh, ho, what a huge difference. I don't know if the camera picks this up. I really don't, but it's a big difference. I'm gonna turn this AC off. It's getting cold at night here. All right, we're gonna go the same way we came last night, or yeah, I guess it was last night when I filmed the first part of this. And uh, we'll go all the way up to the same spot we went, and then when I come back, we'll turn them on bright and see what the difference is. I can tell you it's a massive difference. If the camera doesn't pick it up, definitely a difference. And then when we get back, we'll walk around it. Hopefully uh, nobody turned my outside lights on so we can take a look at it. It's amazing how far technology is, has come and just in headlights. You know, when, when this first started, HIDs were all the rage and everybody wanted HID headlights and the kits were like ridiculously expensive. Now, LED has really taken over. You can see it's shining up against stuff. All right, let's see what happens. Let me go bright. Yeah. The brights are better. 
but definitely I'll you know one thing about LEDs I generally don't ever switch off of dim I generally just keep it on bright or I generally just keep it on dim all the time We will uh, pull in here, get out and walk around this thing and take a look. Golly, that's so much brighter. Let's give it a walk around here. Woo! So that's dim. Let's put it on bright real quick. Wow, what a huge change. I know I say this about every one of these I do, but it just, it amazes me how much better it is than uh, the old school halogens. Got it back here in the garage. I know it needs cleaned, but huge difference. Guys, you know, this thing's nasty. They're both nasty, but you could see that, you know, I tint the windshield a majority of the newer stuff that we have, and so, those lights make a huge difference. Would it be better um, if I didn't have my windshield tinted? Absolutely, it would. But I would still put LEDs in even if I didn't tint the windshield. It just helps, you know, whether you have the windshield tinted or not. But uh, I'm still kind of bummed about the, the uh, UPS driver that threw a rock up and cracked my windshield right there or put, uh, you know, a spot on it. I'm hoping, like I said, I can get that filled. If not, hopefully we don't have to replace the glass. But Either way, like I said, guys, it needs to be clean. You can see the two different variants of green here side by side. I'm a big, I'm a fan of green. Green is my favorite color. Uh, you can also see we still have some, some tire left over from the track event that you guys saw in a video when my son took this thing down the track. But if you guys like this video, please like always um, go down there in the comments and let me know about it and smash that thumbs up button. Uh, a couple people have asked, you know, on the Yukon here, I went LED, or sorry, HID to LED. And several have asked about, you know, how have they held up because it was a plug and play deal. Uh, no like pinning extra wires or anything, kind of an odd swap, but I actually have recently had one go out. So I'll be looking for a video on it very soon because we're gonna replace it with a different brand and we will see how long those last. I think these have been in for about four months, five months maybe, and we already got one out, so. Hopefully this isn't the same. I generally don't have that issue with LEDs when we're not, um, you know, going HID to LED. This is a factory HID. So hopefully all that makes sense. But anyway, guys, like I said, if you did enjoy it, please smash the thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, guys, go down there and hit the subscribe button. While you're down there doing all that, make sure you ring the bell icon to notify you every time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.